What's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you how to replicate this digital dripping paint effect in Photoshop so that you can apply it to your own text. Now for this video, I'm gonna go with a bit of a different approach than usual uh, in terms of the different steps you need to take to achieve the effect. Just because this one is less about importing values and lighting angles and blending modes and all that stuff. And it's a bit more of a freestyle tutorial. So I'm just gonna show you guys how I make it and I'm gonna give you all the information you need for you guys to be able to replicate this effect. All right, let's do this. So let's start by opening a new Photoshop document. You can make this however big you want, but I'll just go ahead and leave it at 3000 by 3000 pixels. And since I'm only gonna be using this digitally, I'll leave the resolution at 72 pixels per inch and the color mode at RGB. Now let's go ahead and type in our text. So we're gonna select the type tool and change the size to anywhere around a thousand points since we're working on a pretty big canvas. Now type in your text. Actually, let's make this a little bigger. Uh, I'll just bring up the transform tool by pressing Command T or Control T on PC. Then I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift and then drag one of those corner points to scale it up properly. Now I'll just be showing you how to create this effect on a single letter, just so you guys can understand how to do it. And from there you can basically just repeat the process for every letter in the word you want to type. So I'll be using a B for this example, since it has a straight line and some curves, so that way I can cover both. Now you can use whichever font you like for this tutorial, but I suggest something that looks handwritten just so it looks more natural as opposed to like a regular serif or sans serif font. I'll be using a font called Belinda, which I purchased from myfonts.com uh, just because I think this style works pretty well with the effect. So I'll leave a link to that font in the video description, but you can use whichever font you want. Now that we have our text, we're going to go ahead and make this guy a smart object just by clicking on the layer and selecting Convert to Smart Object. All right, now we're gonna find ourselves a texture to work with. So essentially you wanna find a picture with some color and contrast variations. I find that a sunset picture usually works pretty well for this effect, so I downloaded this picture from a free stock photo website called pexels.com, which I find is one of the best free photo resources out there. And uh, you guys should definitely check it out. So I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to download the same picture. But yeah, feel free to use any picture you want. Just try and pick something colorful with lots of color variations. Uh, just make sure it's not too busy and that the color variations are not too drastic. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this picture in my workspace. Now I'm going to create a mask around the picture to give it the shape of the letter. So I'm gonna do this by pressing Command and clicking in the image of the layer. That way it'll auto-select the shape of my letter. Next, I'm gonna select my picture and click on the layer mask icon. Now you can see that our picture is contained within the shape of the letter. Now let's just click on this little eye icon to hide this layer, which we won't be needing from this point on, but we'll just keep it in case we wanna go back to it in the future. Then let's go right here and click on this little chain link icon. That way we'll be able to move the picture around without distorting the shape of the letter. As you can see, we're now free to move the picture within the shape of the letter. Now we're gonna scale the picture up and try to find a spot with interesting color variations and not too many small details. Now don't worry if the image gets pixelated, that won't really matter in the end. All right, that's not too bad. We have a bit of orange at the bottom and then all these shades of pink and purple that should look pretty nice. Now that we've set the image the way we want it, we'll just go ahead and duplicate this layer just so we keep a backup in case we wanna go back to it later on. To duplicate the layer, just keep Alt pressed and then drag the layer up. Now let's just make this guy invisible and we'll just group these two layers by selecting them and pressing Command G we'll just name the group backup, just so everything stays clean. Now let's go to our letter and select the layer mask. Right click and select apply layer mask. And if for some reason you've imported the image as a smart object, this won't work. So what you have to do is first 
right click on the layer and select rasterize layer. Then you'll be able to apply the layer mask. All right, so now that we have our base layer to work with, I'm gonna duplicate this guy to create a backup. And now select the top layer and go to filter and select liquify, which will bring up the liquify window. And let's just zoom in on our letter by holding down command and spacebar and clicking on the letter. Make sure you got the forward warp tool selected right up here. Now we'll start warping the image, starting with the bar of the B. So make sure your brush size is about the width of this bar, maybe a bit smaller. You can change the width of your brush by keeping Ctrl and Alt pressed and by clicking while dragging your cursor left and right to make it smaller and bigger. You can also change the size right up here and just make sure the pressure is set to 100. Now what you want to do is start right up here, click and drag your mouse down. This will distort the image following the movement of your mouse. So try and follow the shape of the letter, kind of like if you were tracing over it with a brush. So for now, we're just going to focus on this part and try to make it look like we have some paint dripping going on. Now, this is the part where you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error until you get the effect you like. So don't be scared to try different motions. You can always undo something you did by pressing Command Z, but there's only one level of undo within the Liquify tool, so you can't go back more than one step. So just keep that in mind. All right, so this bar looks decent. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the next part, which is the bottom of this curve right here. And again, I'll just readjust my brush to the size of this bottom portion here. And then I'll just keep going and adjust the brush size as I go. And again, keep in mind, this is not an exact science, so there's definitely going to be some trial and error going on. All right, so I'm pretty satisfied with the way this is looking right now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now you can see that our layer has been distorted and we still have our backup layer down here. Now let's duplicate this layer and give it another go with the liquify tool just to tweak out some details. Now I feel like it would be cool if this center part right here would go through all the way across like this. And then same thing with this end right here. So it looks like an exaggerated brush stroke, but that's just a personal preference. Then click OK. Now everything's still looking a bit too clean for my taste, so I'm going to add a few drips. So I'll just duplicate this first layer here and go back to liquify. And I'll just add a few drips here and there, but not too many because it's easy to get kind of carried away and overdo it. If you feel like some curves still look a bit too clean, feel free to go back to liquify and add some more distortions like I'm going to do here. Now these drips look a bit unnatural, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase part of this layer by adding a layer mask. Now you want to make sure that your foreground color is set to black and that you have your layer mask selected. Then go ahead and erase the part you want. All right, so we're almost done. I just want to add a little bit more variation to the colors. So I'm just going to go down here to the adjustment layers and select hue and saturation. 
Now I'm just gonna drag this hue slider until I get a more orange color uh, down to the bottom of the letter. So I like the orange at the bottom, but I'm not really feeling the hue up here. So I'll just create a layer mask and erase the top part. So the hue and saturation adjustment only applies to the bottom part of the letter. Now to finish off, if you wanna make everything pop a little bit more, go ahead and create another hue and saturation layer and then bring that saturation up a little bit. Just don't overdo it because it can look pretty bad. And that's it guys. So I really hope you enjoyed this one and that you'll be using this effect for your own project. If you do, make sure to tag me on Instagram because I really wanna see what you guys come up with. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.